Okay. Great. Engage, so we go from here. A little aggressive, but. Getting from the Brownsville Airport back to the island. Relatively always an easy drive. Full self driving, version 12.3.4. I am currently at 226,192 miles. This car has been a uh, dream. I do have my Uber app on. I have it filtering rides back to the island. Just got through dropping off someone at the airport. So I'm heading back to the island now. Uh, tomorrow I got to drive up to San Antonio and then to Austin and then uh, back to San Antonio and then back down. So long drive tomorrow. I may film or live stream some of that. I'm not sure yet. Um, full self-driving, I'm still in control of the car. Uh, it still monitors me to make sure I'm paying attention to the road. It does ask for some uh, input every now and then steering wheel to touch it. It does require you to kind of hold your hands on the wheel. Uh, but we try to keep my hands away as much as possible since people want to say we are driving the car subconsciously and it's not really driving itself but it is in fact driving itself it's falling down that's for my charger for my laptop the keyboard up there is connected to my laptop uh, bluetooth keyboard of course bluetooth mouse laptop here some uh, x-real ar glasses to uh, see the screen on the laptop if whenever I'm parked, waiting for rides, I can see everything on the laptop, work on pictures and videos. It makes it a lot easier to have to pull out the laptop, open it up and work on it. it. Gives me a bigger screen to work on, especially when sitting in the car. Kind of be nice if we could just send it to this screen. But um, Tesla doesn't give us that option when parked. A lot of things I would love to see Tesla do. Uh, in the car navigation, I would love to be able to restrict the kilowatt hours uh, per mile to increase the range of the driving. Um, because right now, as you can see, it, it's pretty aggressive on the acceleration. So if I look at the energy chart, it's going to say aggressive consumes more energy. It's not being conservative on the energy. I am kind of upset with, but that's what it is. Range degradation. When I bought this car, it had 26,000 miles on it. It was a uh, loaner version uh, that I bought from uh, Tesla. Uh, it is a long range with the performance boost. When I bought it, it only had a, it's a 2018. When I bought it, it only had 280 miles of range at a full charge. Um, now when I charge it to full, I have 261 miles. So I really haven't lost that much range. Um, like I said, I'm at 226,000 miles on this. I've had no issues. Uh, recently I went ahead and changed the struts and the ball joints and all that in the front because all these rough roads and Brownsville can do a lot of damage to that, especially over 200,000 miles. That cost me $2,000. So it wasn't that expensive. And you can figure, I did 200,000 miles. I paid $2,000 for that maintenance. Uh, I've added five gallons of winter washer fluid and I'm on my third set of tires. So I really have not spent much money on maintenance. I don't buy the expensive EV tires. Uh, what I am buying is the road huggers from uh, Discount Tires. They have been doing me very good, about 65,000 miles on a set of tires. Uh, for all four of them, mounted, balanced, and 
roadside warranty and everything only comes to seven hundred and forty dollars. Uh, since I've been down here on South Padriana, and I've been pretty much just doing Uber and Lyft for income. My channel don't, don't really make much money on that. Donations do help. Thank you very much. Um, you know, any donations you do through uh, YouTube it takes a while to show up, but they are appreciated. Uh, in the description, I should have the links to my PayPal or Venmo or something. Um, if you want to send donations that way, it's accepted. Um, Uber and Lyft, eh, it's kind of been kind of bad. It seems like Uber and Lyft is taking more and more of each and every ride. So I'm not making as much on Uber and Lyft anymore. Uh, a standard short little ride on the island, I used to make $4.30 on that one short ride. Uh, and unfortunately now that is um, only paying about $3.12 per ride. So Uber has decided to take more. Now part of that is that they are no longer adding the $1 extra for every ride and trip for driving an EV. Instead, they will give you uh, $210 for every 200 trips you do, or 200 people you drive. Uh, kind of a more pressure so that you have to really drive a whole lot more to make, you know, take advantage of that. And that's within 30 days. So that's you know, okay, I guess. I don't know. It just with what they charge the customers and what they pay the people, it's really unfair the way they work. We know that coming up on uh, you know this year, there's supposed to be a big reveal. Everybody's anticipating it is the uh, Robo Taxi reveal. Think it's going to be called Auto uh, since Elon is kind of doing things that kind of hint, hint to it. Will Robo Taxis roll out this year? Mm, I don't think so. I mean, we're not going to be getting a ride from a Robo Taxi this year unless it's a very limited area and just a little test market area. Me personally driving Uber and Lyft to make a living down here, um, that is going to make it very difficult. Um, I don't really anticipate something like a robo taxi service in the area killing my business. Uh, even with the full self-driving and everybody that I drive, just like the couple I just dropped off the airport, if I asked them, you know, if they would have gotten in this car, if there was nobody in the car, definitely 100% no, they would not. Um, I think it's kind of a, it's going to be quite a long time before the masses will accept it for one. But, you know, it will take away from that market and the people who rely on this for an income. I may have to go back to doing my, my IT work. I do kind of miss it. Um, yeah, I've been in the computer IT field since the 70s. Everything from hardware, software, network security, you name it. It's kind of fun to, to work on that stuff, and that's all I ever do. I mean, I got the keyboard here for my laptop and everything. It's just, it's in my blood. Um, I still tap the steering wheel every now and then. It kind of acts as an input. Uh, usually on these drives, I'm just listening to my music and have it cranked up. Can't really play that because of monitorization issues. So I will ramble. right-hand lane here. Okay. But for some reason, it doesn't seem to change the speeds once it gets up here. Uh, I don't know what it is about this
this stretch of road, I mean, right now we're coming up, there's a 65 mile per hour speed limit sign, it's always been there, and it doesn't even show up on the visualization, it doesn't even recognize it, but the car jumps up to 52, and it now goes into what looks like a highway interstate mode. I'm going to increase it up to 65. If I was in the left-hand lane, oddly, it would switch to 55. Um, I don't know why. This road, it never sees that 65. On the interstate, it does see the speed limit signs. If it's a conflict between navigation data and the signs, I am not convinced about that. I am thinking the navigation data is telling the car where the sign is to start looking for. Because if I'm being blocked by a pickup truck or something, it doesn't see the sign, it doesn't adjust. Here's another 65 mile per hour speed limit sign. It doesn't even show up on here at all. Uh, it's still showing the speed limit being 45. And it's highlighted in blue around it because I'm going excessively over that speed limit. But it's still allowing me to go over it, which is good, and I'm thankful. Otherwise, I'll be fighting the car. Um, I'm going to turn off the Uber here. And for a stop for the stoplight and now it's green so we'll proceed Right lane closed is actually the shoulder that's closed. And 
further out the left lane is closed, so we have to switch anyway. Uh, these construction workers don't really put these uh, orange barrels out properly. As you see, it is visualizing the barrels as cones, um, but that's only when it's doing a highway interstate mode. It does feel like the highway interstate mode is uh, a newer version of the way it handles. The old version 11 highway stack had the proper speed limit for this area.
not putting them out straight all the time. I'll have it go a little bit slower through here. Because we got barrels missing. And like I say, they're not lined up evenly. But it's doing a pretty decent job here. Now we get to a lot of loose dirt and gravel. Fresnos in the past year and a half. And it just, it's annoying. And both because they're pretty much a uh, speed trap zone. You can't really argue with them. the car has handled this just fine. It's not a very tricky drive. There's no real you know, Chuck Kirk cook turn left turns or any of that to worry about. We're just heading back to the hotel. A 
lot of times when I'm driving, I just let it do its thing. We, we can make this a little bit interesting. Let me cancel this here and uh, navigate to McDonald's, South Padre Island. The reason why I'm changing the McDonald's is because I have like three or four places that I find that when the full self-driving ends, it will actually park itself. Uh, pulling into a parking space. It won't back up. I don't have to disengage full self-driving. In these instances, it's not everywhere. It's just certain places. McDonald's, it seems to do pretty regularly. Uh, one time I had to abort it because it was pulling into a little bit of handicap space. Um, we need that option in here. You know, let, have, give us a setting in the menu, menu that we are handicapped. That way, whenever they do enable full self-driving or self-parking, that it can pick up handicap parking space. Now, do we really need it to pick a handicap parking space? Especially when you have smart summons and you can have the car come to you? It doesn't matter where it's parked. Now, if we can get it to smart park, meaning... I can pull up to the front of the Walmart, get out of the car, tell the car to go find a parking space and park. It doesn't need a handicap space. Uh, because when I come out, I would just tell the car to come to me so it doesn't matter where it's parked. So we can leave the handicap parking space for the people who really need it to be near there. That's my personal opinion. I think most people would agree with that logic. If you don't actually have to walk from the parking space or walk to the parking space, why take up a handicap space? Um, and when I left, there was some construction or some bridge checking going on here, but it looks like they finished, so it's all lanes are open. Now, most of the time when I'm driving, waiting to catch a ride, uh, waiting for someone to order an Uber or a Lyft, I don't tell the car where to go. I just let it drive. And most of the time, it'll just drive straight. Sometimes it'll make turns. Sometimes, you know, it has a mind of its own, decides where it's going to go. Now we're in Port Isabel. We got the uh, pirate tour cruise ships out here doing tours. Some dolphin watches over here. Um, I ha haven't heard much about these guys. They do seem to stay busy. Um, pirate ships is on the left there. On the island, there's several other places to do. Uh, Dolphin tours. Most people really seem to like breakaway cruises and the original Dolphin Watch. But you also have eco tours, and yeah, I think they all do a good job. They're not overly priced either, they're all reasonably priced. Um, on the island, we also have the Island Adventure Park down the end of the road, where they have horseback riding and a petting zoo and some zip lines. As you notice, it was going a lot faster than 35 um, on the bridge, but it didn't see the 55 side until we got to the 55 side, even though technically it's back at the beginning of the bridge. They don't have a sign back there, though. But everybody speeds up to 55, 65 on this bridge. Since we left the 
airport, we only had that one spot where I had to press the accelerator because it was kind of breaking the caution light there at the intersection. But it started breaking afterwards, so I'm not really sure why it was doing that there. Um, I didn't want to disengage or record it because uh, I'm trying to see just how it does all the way. It'd be nice if we had a way to do a report and a button on the screen like we used to without disengaging little things like speed limit wrong. And there's the 45, it actually switched before we got there, but it's not aggressively slowing down. We're at a 45 coming up to a 30, and we're doing 58. It really needs to slow down more than that. Now we're in a 30. Now we're getting some aggressive braking. So it's down to 46. Still a little too fast, but it is slowing down. Now we're coming into a red light. It really needs to slow down a little bit more aggressively, but not too aggressively. But then again, I would complain if it gets something wrong. That's why Kia, they, uh, the Sea Turtle Rescue Place had a bunch of those donated to them, or a few of those donated to them for their uh, Sea Turtle Rescue vehicles. So hopefully there's not a Sea Turtle in distress. It's coming up the turn here. Right-hand lane. Well, it's coming. Both lanes. Make up your mind. A little wobbly there, but I see there was a car behind me, so it was decided to stay in that lane. Now it should go ahead and get over while it's clear, but it seems to wait to do that in the last minute. few seconds as we're coming up to 0.1 miles now it's finally getting over let's see if I had one time where it went into the wrong parking lot but every other time it seems to do this perfectly uh, it's kind of breaking coming up here and it's coming up to the McDonald's parking lot as you can see I'm not touching anything I'm not doing anything let the car do the complete driving They've done a good job painting the lines in the parking lot. It's now coming up here. It's saying autopilot navigation complete. I'm letting it go. It is uh, cre creeping forward here. And it is deciding it's going to pick this parking spot. It seems to prefer this parking spot not very close to the door. And it's come up to a complete stop. I have not touched anything. This is the car doing everything itself. So I'm going to hit end trip. And I'm going to tell it to head back to the uh, Holiday Inn Resort. I still have full self-driving engaged. But, of course, it's parked, so it won't go. So let me disengage and put it in reverse. It's asking me why. It shouldn't know why, because it can't drive forward. So I'm going to... Re-engage it here. Wait for the also and now I can enable it. So it should figure its way out of this parking lot. It's kind of confused by the cones, but it's doing a good job. As Dr. Know-It-All, great channel, check him out, would say it's a little wussy, but you are in a parking lot. And it is trying to figure it out. There's no real mapping of where the parking lot is here. It's coming up to the little stop thing here. It's making sure it's clear. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing around the palm trees and stuff here. Like, here comes some vehicles, so it's not clear. It's 
thinking about going, but it would have to punch it if it was. It's hard to judge some of this traffic here, especially if these golf carts on the road, if they don't go the speed limit, they go under. So you have to handle those. And letting the car do the driving is nice because when I'm over here looking for an opening, I'm not looking to the right constantly to see if there's a bicycle or someone on a scooter coming up on the sidewalk here. It's nice that the car can see everything all around and it handles it. It's now going over and it should go over another lane. And will it do it in time or will it miss it? Okay, for some reason it's missing its turn and who knows what it's doing here. Let's see what happens. car coming up beside us. I don't know what that was about. It should have gone over. Let's see if it figures it out. It's going all the way over now. Most of the time it would make that left hand turn there. I still have not intervened. I'm letting the car mess up. Um, it got over, tried to figure out what it was going to do, let the other car pass. That was okay. So it's sitting at this light. Will it make this U-turn? It should be able to. some reason the navigation data has this funky u-turn here sometimes it will get over and make the left of the light other times it wants to go this way and do the u up here even though the navigation for some reason doesn't give me an option to make a left of the light i, I don't know it's nav data they, they really need to fix the nav data. Tesla needs to start making their own maps. Now we're coming up to the stop sign. It's waiting for it to be clear on the right. And last car, so it's getting over. It needs to get all the way over the right hand side, which it usually has no issue doing. It's working its way over. Now the next thing about coming to the hotel from this angle it sometimes misses the parking lot or the, or the road going to the hotel and wants to go to the road that goes to the empty field. Um, which can be an issue at times. You can see how well the road is marked. It does a very good job trying to figure out where the lanes is even though they really need to paint this road again since they're all so worn out and unseeable. I will probably hit the supercharger. Since I'm down to 42 miles, I try to charge up to 100 miles at least to continue doing Uber and Lyft. Um, for the next few hours, Dead a rush. Hopefully, it might be a little busy. It's been a very slow day. I'm waiting for the island to get busy again. Yeah, it should come up here to the 
this turn here, and like I say, I find sometimes when it's coming this direction, it overshoots the road. It's not very clear, it's poorly marked. That vehicle is a lead vehicle, but it is turning, and I think the lead vehicle is helping it. Otherwise, sometimes it goes over that way into that field. So, the lead vehicle told the car basically where that is. I do think the full self driving does use lead vehicles for a lot of things. Which I don't mind. I do find this version is seeing potholes, no, not potholes, but speed bumps, speed lumps, speed humps, and quite a few of the dips that I used to have problems with. It's coming in this parking lot here. This parking lot is very poorly marked. It's like this, these red lines and these white checkered. It has a hard time finding its way out. Now we're coming into here. It's going to go straight. Sometimes it turns right back there. It's kind of interesting the way the car sometimes will choose to do things differently. As we see, it's still going here. It's saying navigation is ending, but it's still driving. Let's see where it goes. Let's see where it comes to a stop at. I'm just letting it go here. And it's still one in the circle of the parking lot. You know, autopilot navigation is complete, but it's still moving. And it's slowly coming to a stop. But what's it going to do? It's going to turn. Okay. Now, I don't know if it's circling the parking lot, trying to let me choose what parking space I want to go. Okay, it's now going to go down this lane here. It's crossing over these lines. Very jerky when it's doing this. It's like it's thinking. And it's going to just stop here. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what happens if I nudge it? Let me nudge it a little. Okay, I just give it a little bitty nudge, and it's proceeding on. This is kind of fun to see what the car will do. Now, is it going to turn right or left? And it's going to turn right. Okay, and it's going to... Uh, I still have this set, you know, for it to navigate. Now it's turning again. Well, is it going to stop in the same spot again? I think it is. Now it's going to go a little further. Is it going to turn right? Yeah, it's going to turn right. kind of funny. What, what would happen if I ended the navigation in trip? How do you think it would behave if I do that? Okay, it's not stopping anywhere. It's still just circling. Um, this is kind of funny. What is it going to do? It's coming to a stop here. Okay, so I want in trip, I will nudge it a little. Let's see what happens. Give it a little nudge, just a little bitty tap, and it's going on its own here. What is it going to do? It's going to turn. Is it going to do the same pattern? It's past that. It's now going straight. So where are you taking the car? In the parking lot here. Not very many places you can go. This could be a game. Where would my car take me? And it's at some not even it's not in the parking space.
What if I tell to go to the supercharger? Will it try to get there? Give it a couple nudges there to get it moving again. Let's see how close it will get me to the supercharger. Technically, I think full self-driving should be able to get you to the supercharger and plug in or back in and everything by itself. It is going the different direction away from the supercharger. It is trying to follow the parking lot patterns of parking spaces. Yeah, it's confused. So I'm going to really take over here. We're going to go and plug in and hit the supercharger. Um, kind of laugh about the way it is handling this parking lot. That was kind of interesting. And uh, we're here at the Holiday Inn Beach Resort, South Padre Island. This has been my home for four years now while watching SpaceX. Um, my daily live streams from the hotel window from my room uh, definitely check them out it's a decent hotel and uh, they're right on the beach three pools one heated with swim up bar um, they do have some SpaceX suites nice big banner in the lobby is mine and the uh, poster on the wall or the painting on the wall is um, done by uh, some artists for one of the last SpaceX parties. I'm going to add a couple of those pictures to, for you at the uh, end of the video um, to let you know. I hope you enjoyed this drive. It's been fun and interesting. Until next time. Uh, again, I heard any interventions in that. It did a very good job.